Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder. As you can probably tell from this recording, I've plugged in a Rode NT1 Studio Condenser Microphone. It's going into one of the XLR ports on the side, and this is the audio that you're listening to right now, which will give you an indication of the audio quality that this Zoom is capable of. I've got it dialed all the way up to six, on the first input and there is literally no self noise at all it's a very quiet preamp and beyond that it's an exceptional quality of sound that really does sound better than any other recorder i've used in the past coming up from the h4n it was always adequate however this really does sound a lot better and i notice it in particular when using different microphones including the rode ntg2 which is a boom microphone that for some reason just didn't quite sound the same on the H4n. When I did dial it up in order to get a decent signal, it would bring in with it a lot of noise, which I always thought had to do with the microphone itself. But having used it on the H6, I noticed that the noise is infinitely less and it's become a much more usable microphone for my location work. So I'm really impressed with the preamps of the H6 and that's one of the main reasons for the upgrade. The other is all of the extra features and the expandability and mostly it's become an advantage for me getting access to the four XLR inputs which not only accepts balanced XLR cables, but also quarter inch jacks for musical instruments. So a very versatile audio recorder indeed. In terms of what's included inside the box, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, inside the packaging, you get this plastic hard case box, which is really useful for protecting the zoom on location. You get the recorder itself, of course, you get four AA batteries, no adapter is included. So if you wanna power this from the mains, you need to purchase the optional adapter. It does include four AA batteries in the box. You normally get anywhere from 10 to 20 hours for regular recordings using the capsule microphones. But if you happen to be using XLR inputs, especially if you're drawing off phantom power, you're probably gonna get a lot less than 10 hours. You may even get as low as four or five hours. Having said that, it certainly exceeds the performance I was getting out of the H4n, which would really chew into those batteries and only lasted me one or two hours when I was using two inputs with phantom power. So usually, you know, most recording sessions don't go longer than an hour or two. So if you've got a fresh set of batteries, it'll certainly get you by. You get two interchangeable microphones that are really easy to attach and detach. You get the XY recorder and you also get the mid to side recorder for specialized film work. There's also a windshield which fits snugly onto the XY capsule. And of course you get a manual to teach you how to use it. Having said that, in terms of usability, there's not really that much you need to know. There's a navigation system on the side which allows you to access all of the features and controls and these are all viewable and very clearly laid out on the nice color display. Speaking of which, that color display really comes into its own for monitoring the input of your signals. You get all the channels displayed on screen in color so you can monitor when you're in yellow, green and peaking in red. So it's really useful for live recording. The dials on top allow you to very easily adjust each individual input. You have a negative 20 dB pad control so that you can avoid peaking. Speaking of which, the software has a setting that records a backup file for you automatically at a negative 12 dB level in the event that you accidentally record it at too high a level. There's also a pre-record feature. So if you have that turned to on, it will actually pre-record which means that you're not going to miss any essential data during a recording. So that's really nice to have. There's also an SD slot on the side. It records to MP3 and WAV formats. You also get a USB port on the side to connect to a computer. You can use that to download files directly to the computer rather than using the SD card, or you can use it as a sound card which means that you can interface with popular software titles such as Logic, Ableton, and GarageBand. So very useful functionality there, a second purpose if you like. There's a 3.5 jack on the bottom of the unit, which operates as a line out, which means that you can plug this directly into your video camcorder or DSLR camera, whatever it might be, and have the audio go directly into the video camera, which can be quite useful. There's a remote option as an optional extra, which allows you to control all of the settings 
of the Zoom FireWire remote control. On the rare occasion, I have actually connected my 3.5 lapel microphone to the unit. And you can do this in a number of ways. You can use a 3.5 to XLR adapter. But if you haven't got one of those, you can actually connect your 3.5 input into the 3.5 jack, which is situated on the XY capsule. So that's a really easy way to get any 3.5 microphone or audio equipment into the device. In terms of the ergonomics and design, the buttons are really well laid out. The record button, of course, is large and easy to access. Stop, play, pause, rewind, and fast forward. And above that, you get the left-right control for your capsules, and you get the one, two, three, and four inputs on the side, which you can just tap on and off at will. When you're using phantom power, you need to go into the menu system and enable phantom power for each track that requires it. Other than that, a very easy to use and intuitive interface indeed. And that screen being in color really is one big advantage over the H4N, which was a monochrome screen. Just being able to see the meter readout in colors makes it really easy to understand where you're at in terms of the levels. Of course, you've got the yellows and the greens in the safe zone and red means you're going to be peaking or at too high a level. So a very well thought out design. There's not really many negatives to talk about here. The one thing I would have liked to have seen is a power adapter included in the box. But having said that, it is available as an optional extra. You can even buy third party ones. For me, it hasn't been an issue. I've been running quite comfortably off batteries given that extra battery life that it really sees me through any recording and batteries are very cheap these days and certainly you can even run rechargeable batteries on the unit. The other thing that I don't quite like and never have with the Zoom products is the latch on the side of the unit itself. It's always a little bit cumbersome to open with your fingernail. There's a little slat that you need to get into and that becomes a little bit worn out over time. That's the only criticism in terms of the design of the unit. I do like the fact that the screen is tilted on an angle. So if you do happen to mount it on top of your camera using the optional mounting accessory, you still get a decent view of that display for your monitoring. So in summary, as you can tell, I'm overly pleased with the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder. Apart from all those extra features and benefits, it really comes down to the quality of those preamps that has really enabled me to get the most out of my existing microphones and really get optimal audio recordings for the stuff that I'm doing on this YouTube channel and for client work as well. So very impressed with the Zoom H6. If you're interested in hearing more of the Zoom H6, I'm going to add a bonus section at the end of this video where I'll do a few tests using both of the included capsules and a couple of my alternate microphones so you can hear how it sounds recording different types of scenes and with different microphones. So if you wanna check that out, stick around. Otherwise, if you've got any comments about the content you've seen today, as always, feel free to put them in the comments box below and consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one, bye for now. Here is a sample of the XY microphone used for narration. I've selected the angle to be 90 degrees, which is the most sensitive to the signal coming from directly in front and less sensitive to the sound coming from the side. To widen, you can change to 120 degrees. This microphone is positioned directly in front of me around 10 centimeters away. Stereo can often be a richer sound and is certainly an advantage when recording instruments too. Now let's switch over to the MSH-6. For a more mono signal, the mid-side microphone allows you to adjust the width of the stereo image after it's been recorded. Although the MSH-6 appears to be just one microphone, it actually contains two microphones positioned on top of one another. One of the microphones inside the capsule is unidirectional, while the other is bidirectional. The basic concept behind MS recording is that the mid microphone pick up signal coming from the center, while the side microphone creates ambience and directionality by adding or subtracting information from either side. The mid side technique works well whenever you need a variable amount of room sound, and you can control this setting in the zoom menu.
And here is another sample, this time using the Rode NTG2 boom microphone plugged in via a cable in the XLR port on the side. And for this audio test, I've got a Rode lapel microphone plugged into the 3.5 audio jack of the XY capsule. Note, in order to get this feature to work, you'll have to go into the plug-in power option in the menu and enable it.